Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, kth symbol in grammar. We are given a bunch of rows that I guess are one indexed. And to go through it quickly, the first row is gonna have a single value zero. And then the rule is that we build every subsequent row by taking zeros and replacing them with zero one. And now since we have a one here, we have an additional rule which is we replace zeros with zero ones, but we replace ones with one zero. And so the next row would look like this, where we take this guy and make it zero one. This one would be one zero. This one would also be one zero. This one would be zero one. So that's the idea here. So this would be the first row. This is the second. This is the third. And this is the fourth. And in this row, we want to choose the kth element. So n is going to be one parameter in this problem. n is going to tell us which row we want to select. So for example, if n is equal to four, we are going to choose this row. And then in that row, we only care about the kth element. So if k was one, this is going to be one index, by the way. So if k is one, we choose the first element. If k is two, we choose the second. If k is three, we choose the third, et cetera, et cetera. And we are are guaranteed that k is always going to be in bounds. If you don't believe me, you can read the bottom of the description of this problem. But basically, they tell us that k is always going to be less than or equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1. This isn't a coincidence. This is going to be how many elements are going to be in the nth row, because we start with 1 and we double them every single time. That's the idea. Now, the first approach you might think of. The most brute force would literally be to build every single row. And technically that works. I'm pretty sure it will get you time limit exceeded though, because I believe the time complexity would be roughly two to the power of n minus one. So pretty inefficient. But is there a better approach? Is there some kind of trick that we can do? Well, the idea actually is just by looking at this picture, it kind of looks like a tree, doesn't it? Now, let me redraw this exact same thing like this. We start with zero. The left child is going to be zero. The right child is going to be one. From this zero, same exact thing. It's kind of recursive, isn't it? We have a zero here and then a one here. With this one, we're going to get a one here and then we're going to get a zero here. So the first observation to make is this is kind of like a tree. OK, with that in mind, how is that going to help us? Don't we still have to traverse every single element to then like once we get to the kth row, choosing the kth element? Well, maybe the fact that we already know which k value we're looking for can be used to our advantage. And in this case, it can think about it this way. We know we're looking for the nth row. Let's say we know that the nth row has four elements in it. This is the third row and has four elements in it. And we want, suppose, the a third element. Let's say k is equal to three. We want this target element. Do we really have to do a breadth first search on this tree? Do we really have to do a depth first search where we go through every single node? No, because we can do kind of like a binary search or just like a traditional search on a binary tree where the time complexity is actually going to be the height of the tree. And the reason that we can do that is because from the root position here, we know this is our target. We know that there are four elements in the row that we're looking for. And we happen to know that K is in the second half of those elements. Our target is in the second half of those elements. So from the roots perspective, we have two choices. We either go left or we go right. With this in mind, don't you think we should probably go right? No need to go left. We can forget that this ever even existed. But the hard part, or at least this might not be obvious to you, how do we do it now? When we started with the entire row, it was pretty easy to know because we could just take the length of the row, divide it by two, and then we would know is the K value in the first half or the second half? Well, the easiest way, at least in my opinion, is to have two pointers. One pointer is going to initially be uh, set to this position, which is going to be one, because like I said, this is going to be one indexed. That's according to this problem. And the second value is going to be here. In this case, it's four, but 
In the general case, it's going to be 2 to the power of n minus 1, which in this case, let's say, is going to be 4. So that's how we're going to do this with two pointers. Very simple. So here, when we decided to go right, what we would do, kind of like in binary search, take this pointer, shift it to the right. So then it would be here. And now that our pointers are here, we are at this position, by the way. And once again, we're going to check, should we go left or should we go right? Well, this pointer is at value three. This uh, pointer is at value four. K is equal to three. So it clearly lies in the left half. So here we would choose to go to the left. And at this point, we would stop. We're going to stop once we reach that particular level. And we uh, know how many levels to traverse based on the N parameter. So that's kind of the idea of this problem. We're sort of doing a augmented binary search, or you could think of it as a search on a tree structure. With this, the time complexity is just going to be the height of the tree, which, like I said, is going to be based on the N input. So the time complexity is going to be big O of N. What do you think about the memory complexity? Since we just have two pointers and we're not really building this tree structure, nor are we traversing it with recursion, we actually don't need any extra memory. Memory is going to be constant. So knowing this, let's go ahead and code it up. One quick thing I want to mention, though, is when we compute the midway point, we know like we can have a left pointer here, a right pointer here. Uh, let's assume that this is one. Let's assume that this is four. When we calculate the midway point, we do so usually by adding these two together and dividing by two. If I take one plus four and divide that by two and we round down, we're going to get two. So that kind of tells us that the midway point is always going to be here. And we pretty much are guaranteed that the size of our search space is always going to be even. So this is pretty much always going to be the case. So when we check if our K value is in the left half or the right half, we're going to compare it with mid. You'll see what I mean in the code explanation right now. So one obvious thing that we need to keep track of is what our current value happens to be. We know it's initially going to be zero because that's kind of the root of our tree. The first row is a single value with just zero. And this is also what we're going to be returning. But we know that we have a search space to keep track of as well. I'm going to have two pointers called left and right to define that. Left is going to be one. Right is going to be two to the power of n minus one, like I mentioned earlier. And then we're going to iterate roughly n times, but I'm actually going to iterate in range of n minus one times because we're already at the first row. We've already computed the first row and we just need to compute n minus one more rows. If n is one, this loop isn't going to execute and we're going to return zero regardless. So that works out in that case. The reason this is an underscore is because we're actually not going to need this variable at all. Now it's pretty much just the binary search that I talked about. We compute mid, it's going to be low left plus right, divide that guy by two, and then we do our comparison. Like I just mentioned, our k variable, we need to know, is it in the left half or the right half? If it's equal to the middle value, it's in the left half. If it's less than the middle value, it's also in the left half. So this is the comparison that we do. If k is less than or equal to mid, we are in the left half. In the other case, we're in the right half. But what do we do? If we're in the left half, or rather if our k value is in the left half, we should move to the left half. So what we do is set our right pointer now equal to mid. If we were in if our K value is in the right half, then we'd want to search in the opposite direction. So we would set left equal to mid plus one. So that is kind of the most important part of the problem. But there's one last thing left. Remember, when we have a zero, like I have drawn up above or written up above, its left child is going to be zero and its right child is going to be one. When we have a one, its left child is going to be one and its right child is going to be zero. So we could write out a bunch of if statements to get this exactly right. But there's actually a bit of a pattern that you might notice if we move to the left half, like here is when we're moving to the left side of the search space. When we do that, the value doesn't change, does it? Zero goes to zero. One goes to one. So actually, there's nothing needed here. We don't need to update our current integer when we move to the left. But when we move to the right, we swap it. Zero becomes one. One becomes zero. So that's the pattern. So here, what we're going to do is set current equal to zero. If current is equal to one, a shorter way to write this is just if cur. Else, 
this is going to be set to one. We're basically swapping it. So that's all we are doing here. So when you look at the solution code, this seems like a very, very trivial problem. And it kind of is once you understand that this is sort of like a binary search problem, but it's not a trivial problem to solve. So don't feel bad if you weren't able to solve it by yourself. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.